Hi there, hey, it's Clint Mason with Kaizen Well Solutions, and I thought I would go over some general guides on how I look at a well and try to decide fairly quickly what type of plunger we should be uh, moving towards. And it sometimes can be a little bit confusing. There's lots of choices, but I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, if you've got questions after you watch this video, just comment at the bottom, or you can reach me at uh, cmason at kaizen, K-A-I-Z-E-N-W-S dot com, and I will try to answer them for you. So we go through this. Uh, we'll try not to take too much time, but anyways. Um, so picking the right plunger. So we've got, we're going to talk about two-piece, free cycle, quick trip, ported and conventional. And every manufacturer has a version of these and the numbers will move around a little bit and stuff. But hopefully this will give you kind of a general idea um, how to quickly decide on a, either a, a plunger to start with or to a plunger to move to once the well is cleaned up and operating properly. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a two-piece plunger pacemaker. Um, and, and there's a couple of important things. So the very first thing is I always look at flow rates. Now, I consider a two-piece plunger what I call a velocity plunger. I don't really do the GLR calculation because uh, it's easier just to say, hey, if I can get above 60% of wellhead critical on uh, most wells, I almost guarantee you I can make a two-piece plunger work if, if we can maintain that 60%. So I say in this case, picking the right two-piece plunger, if you have flow rates greater than 75% of your wellhead critical, that's the first thing that you should you, to make it a, a maybe a two-piece plunger. The next thing is fluid volumes. Now, Typically, when I'm running a two-piece plunger, I look for higher fluid volumes, um, mostly because of the way they, they operate and they fall and stuff. So they can, they're can they very, very fast falling. You can make a ton of cycles, like easily make 200 cycles a day out of most wells. So with a two-piece plunger, what really makes it extremely interesting is, is you can get away from any shut-in time. That's the other key. If you ever have to shut in the well longer than it takes to get the plunger out of the wellhead, then it's the wrong plunger. But typically use it with higher volume liquid volumes and you, uh, you you want to try and do as many cycles as you can and even though the pacemaker or the two-piece plungers are typically short plungers solid seal they're typically not very efficient but they make up for their inefficiency by the number of cycles so so they can you know they make 10 extra cycles well it's it's you know a total of uh, of 10 minutes maybe of off time a day if, if it, even that maybe last five minutes so the first thing we look for again is the critical rate is it above 75 percent next thing i look for some fluid volumes i'd like to see at least 25 barrels a day and usually these i've, I've easily could go up to 200 barrels a day in, in a lot of these horizontal wells um that's in top fluid rate is going to be impacted by your by your wells bottom hole pressure and, and a number of other factors but that's kind of the typical window um, then I look for how fast the well builds up. So we shut the well in, how quickly does it snap up to the pressure that I need to um, make the plunger cycle again. So in this case, because we really, you know, we really don't want to shut in this well any longer than necessary, just all we want is shut in long enough to make this plunger drop out of the lubricator, maybe go 100, 200 feet down, and then it'll kick the well back on and let it flow. So we want a very fast well buildup. Again, if we, th these plungers can drop, it's like 6,000 feet a minute or, or maybe even faster. So if you think you can shut a well in for a couple of minutes and it's fine and you don't have much fluid, well, this little plunger here is traveling down so fast, it hits that bottom hole spring much harder than it ever could hit it at surface. And it just destroys those bottom hole spring equipment, okay? Um, so there's a wide range of operating conditions, but uh, once this is below 80% of critical rate, so if you, your average daily production drops below 80% of critical rate, you can probably start moving towards a pro fit or a pro cycle, sorry, free cycle plunger. Um, that That's uh, like a, the next plunger we'll talk about here shortly. So some other things about a two-piece plunger. Two-piece plungers require proper sleeve and ball weight combinations. I see a ton of people put in a very heavy ball with not a proper sleeve. And if your weight combinations aren't right, what happens is the ball will fall faster than the sleeve. So the balls and this plunger is coming up and uh, there's a little bump in production or whatever and the ball slips out of the plunger and it has to travel all the way back down to the bottom hole spring to come back together again to start back up. A properly weighted ball and sleeve, the sleeve always falls faster than the ball, so that if it ever does separate, the sleeve basically just sits on the ball no matter what, and, and it'll come to surface. And uh, so we got to make sure you got the proper weight combination. So if you're taking a regular, say, 9-inch sleeve, and now you're running a tungsten carbide ball underneath it, you're going to have a lot of inconsistent runs, because every time that plunger ball separates, you're probably not going to catch that ball again until it hits the bottom hole spring, so you can get a bunch of half cycles and partial cycles, and you need a very, very high rate of uh, energy to keep those together. Okay. So the improper weight combination will make these plunger operate inconsistent or increase bottom hole uh, spring damage as well, because you only want those plungers as heavy as they need to be to get down there with the flow, right, when the gas is flowing. If you're making it extremely heavy, uh, that's more uh, kinetic energy. It's going to pack down to the bottom, and it's going to beat the heck out of your bottom hole springs and your tubing and things like that. So, as you said, this would get below 80% of critical with your two-piece carry rate down to 60. We'll probably want you to get between that 80 and 75% of critical. Yeah, that's production. Seal area, so it's more efficient. So it's actually going to use the gas that's more efficiently. So if the gas volume 
be strong. You need to start to increase the efficiency because you've got to lift that liquid with less gas. Yeah. So, remember what I was saying again, I looked at it as I looked at critical weight. Now, for me, I used to say in the SM, I was going to, you So once we've got uh, that free cycle going and our, our gas rate continues to drop, our velocities are, we get down farther, then we can move away because the, the pump is going to fall quite fast because we're going to need to go up there. It's going to stay put in the bottom and we're going to get it. And we can move to the next step. Okay, so that's it. against higher rates. So anyways, when would I start looking at this particular uh, plunger? Well, if we were below 70% of critical rate, I would say this is probably when we would start to look up. Not the free cycle, might be the Well, this would be a good one versus the free cycle because the free cycle is going to be down there in, in uh, you know, four to five minutes. A bunch of extra energy you're putting down in the well into the bottom hole spring and stuff. Or this one is uh, falling, um, you know, somewhere around that uh, thousand feet per minute, right around there. So in an eight thousand foot well, you would be at bottom in about eight minutes, say nine minutes or something. So if I had ten minutes, uh, you could took my well to kind of build up, level off, and level off, and this would be the case. liquid ratio, the more you can let the well flow continuously, the more you can consider that velocity uh, type pendulum system. So, I mean, So once we get down below the quick cycle plunger, then we're going to look at something like a ported plunger. I think they're like Venturi, Ventro Max, uh, ported. I mean, there's, there's, they go under a bunch of names, but basically there's a port through the plunger or a hole that really allows extra gas to slip through the plunger and will allow the plunger to fall a little faster. It reduces the efficiency because if gas is slipping through the plunger, um, it's, it's taking a lot more gas to move it to surface than it would if it was, a, say, a solid plunger. But if you have a high gas to liquid ratio, it really doesn't matter. And there's lots of wells that work quite well with this type of plunger, mostly because you can get them to bottom a little bit quicker. So where would I typically pick this type of plunger? I would look at uh, a well that's below 50% of critical rate, fluid production probably less than 75 barrels per MCF, MMCF, uh, well build up again that is pretty slow. So these plungers, and, and you can have a wide range of ports in them, but they're going to fall anywhere from 10 to probably 30% faster than the next conventional plunger. So um, if, if we were in that 8,000 foot well, for example, uh, this particular plunger is probably going to fall uh, in, in 20, 20 minutes, where a conventional might be, uh, let's see, um, yeah, it's going to be somewhere around, uh, well, I would say closer to 30 minutes. Yeah, 30 minutes with an 8,000 foot well if it was a conventional plunger, somewhere plus or minus a little bit. So anyways, this will just get down there that little bit faster. So if I have a well that builds up, and we know that the plunger uh, takes uh, 30 minutes if it's a conventional to get down there, but we build up in 20 minutes or 20 
three minutes and it's got enough pressure, there's no sense leaving it shut in for those extra seven minutes. So we would maybe go to a plunger like this if we have the gas to liquid or the gas that can support it. So anyways, number one, below 50% critical rate, fluid production typically less than 75 barrels per mmCF. Well, built, will, uh, well builds up uh, a recovery rate is slower than the time to reach bottom with a spring with a prior quick trip plunger. So a quick trip was going to be down there in eight minutes. Um, the well takes 20 some minutes. This is your next choice because it's still uh, quicker than a conventional to get down there. Typically, your, your range is based on now we're, we've moved into the gas to liquid ratio calculations and not the critical rate or velocity that tubing's flowing at. Porter plungers will not fall against flow, but will fall faster than conventional again, typically 10 to 30%. So now we're past where even a ported plunger is, is, is going to work properly. And again, that's because our gas to liquid ratios have probably got low enough that we really have to conserve the gas. And that's when we're going to start looking at a straight conventional plunger. They typically fall anywhere from 150 to 200 feet per minute or say 50 to uh, 75 meters a minute, somewhere in there is how that is, is about where they fall. The higher the pressure, the slower they fall. Um, so it, it, it takes quite a while. So again, if we're below 50% at wellhead critical rate, that would be the first plunger or one of the first plungers I'd look at that uh, ported and, uh, and maybe a quick cycle. Um, and with this plunger, because we have very limited cycles because it takes so long to fall, we might only, you know, typically I try to look at wells that are under 50 barrels per day. If I got a, uh, you know, there's, there's a limit of number of cycles I can make. If it takes me half an hour to get down there and I bring the plunger up, well, I can do, uh, say it takes 10 minutes to come up. So there's uh, 20, say half an hour. So I'm going to get maybe if I was lucky and I could bring it up and shut it in right away and run it back down, I might be able to get 48 uh, cycles a day, but typically you're talking 30, you know, 30 cycles a day or, or less. And if you're trying to lift 50 barrels or 60 barrels with 30 cycles and you're trying to lift two barrels per cycle, that's quite a bit of weight. That's, uh, you know, if it was water, I think if it was two and three eighths, it'd probably be uh, somewhere around, uh, say, 250 pounds PSI pushing on top of that plunger. So that would be the amount of energy plus friction plus all these other things to make it cycle. So there's a limit to what you're going to lift with this type of plunger typically. So well build up or recovery rate is slower than time to reach the bottom hole uh, spring with prior uh, with the prior ported plunger. So if we have a well that's taking 30, 35 minutes to build up minimum or an hour or two hours, well, then this is the type of plunger you want to use. Now, typically, uh, the typical operation, again, is based on gas to liquid ratio and not critical rate. So, again, there's there's a, a lot to talk about here with these. And, on, and uh, we'll go look at the next slide just to uh, get that figured out. But... Uh, but um, as soon as we, uh, uh, well, well here, let's look at this. So if we look at this well, and here's kind of two charts going in here. I've got GLR velocity. So two piece free cycle. Kind of here's my break between a velocity and GLR. Then we have a conventional. Now inside this free cycle, there's there's quick trip and, you know, two piece. So there's a bunch. This area up here is probably two and a half plungers in our, in our list that we look at. Then we have a conventional, which will be ported conventional and then maybe we're down to a two stage where we would look at a conventional system where we actually have two, two plungers in the tubing uh, staged in, into oh, throughout the tubing. So we've got this is kind of what it looks like but then we've got to consider something else. So if again I was talking about the recovery or build up time. So if I got a well and it it, it kind of falls up here with the GLRs or sorry the, the velocities when this well is flowing on averages is, is up in this velocity range or those ranges that I've mentioned for a two piece and it builds up very quickly or it doesn't need much build up basically it, or it doesn't need any build up at all that it, it can continuously run the plunger then it's going to be a two piece if we need to give it more than a, a few you know 30 seconds or 15 seconds or whatever fall time then we need to consider a free cycle okay and free cycle is going to be able to fall against flow and that, that would be something we would consider because it doesn't fall as fast it's not going to hit the bottom hole spring static and you're not going to beat up the equipment then if we even need a, if it even takes a little longer for it to build up it might be a quick trip with a small bypass where we shut the well in for 10 minutes so that you can kind of see how they overlap here as, uh, as we're going through that. And then once we get below that, we'd have a conventional, well, part of that conventional um, window, like up here, might, maybe this is, maybe it's ported up in here, this, this top section up here, and then it would be conventional plunger. And then once we get from there, then we, you know, we're starting to look kind of at the dual stage. So pressures go up, recovery and build speed, you know, it'll kind of affect those windows. They're not just straight. So it, hopefully that makes sense of what I'm trying to, trying to explain. There's, there's kind of a, a window, and within a window, there's another window in deciding whether, you know, what exactly might be the best plunger um, because the two piece and a free cycle are very similar plungers as far as um, abilities but the two piece falls faster it can cycle more often and it's typically not as efficient free cycle is typically more efficient it still falls fast but not as fast so it can't do 200 cycles a day typically um, or, or you know it's going to do maybe a half of the cycles that a two piece can do and then a quick trip won't really fall against flow unless it's very very low and uh, you know under way under 50 or under 50 percent of well critical so it's more of a short off cycle conventional plunger you need off time ported plunger which would be up in that top section that i've pointed out falls a little quicker and then a dual stage if we're really down our glrs are very low and typically uh your glr range is going to be somewhere bottom without a packer is going to be about 400 standard cubic feet per barrel 
per thousand feet of depth for a conventional. If you have a packer, it's going to be closer to 12 or 1600 standard cubic feet per barrel per thousand feet of depth. If you're down below that, then you would look at kind of that dual stage plunger as an option. So you can see that. Then we're going to be a whole cycle here in this area. So this is.